Well, good morning. Good morning as we start another day. Take a look at some of the numbers here today. And I'm also going to look at, stop applauding there. Um, going to look absolutely bonkers this morning. Yes, you're always bonkers, Terry. And good morning, Jackie. Um, going to take a look at some quick real estate numbers. And then we're going to get into the good news regarding water. Because water's on everybody's mind when they think, I really want to move to Arizona. And uh, some of it is true and some of it's very misleading. Pretty much typical of everything that you see. I sent something to my buddy the other day, a joke. And he goes, is this true? I said, yes, I saw it on the internet. So here's my seven-day moving average. Look how it contracts popped up again. They're 3,400. Now, that's not a huge number, but relatively speaking, compared to where we were, it's pretty, it's pretty good. New listings went up a little bit, just ticked down just a hair. These are all updated on, on uh, Monday afternoon as the contracts come through the weekend. So Monday and Tuesday, you'll see <clears throat> new contracts tend to tick up a little bit. Active listings tend to, to come down. And I don't have my ticker going here. Let me get you the real numbers here. Interest rates today, 6.99, and they're kind of hanging steady as everybody's waiting for Chairman Powell to speak. And I believe he did say a few words and said, well, it looks like we're going to ha have to raise rates even more. So what's the effect of that? And that's what everybody's everybody's waiting for. Um, <laughs> yeah, bonkers is the new crushing it. Um, here's something from the Cromford Report. This is interesting. Look at this. This is the listing success rate has skyrocketed from 62% at about 78%. <clears throat> and in their commentary here, they said with mortgage rates much higher than four weeks ago, many people have turned to pessimism about the housing market. However, interest rates are just one of the many things that determine how the market behaves. We advise you not to obsess about them, but pay attention to many other factors. Now I'm falling into that trap and running at altitude here says, yes, rates are going up that uh, as rates increase, that sales decline, but it is defying that logic right now. Look at the chart below and see how the listing success rate has improved sharply since week four. A normal market generates a listing success rate around 60, whereas we are headed towards 80%, consistent with a market where supply is unable to keep up with demand. And we're seeing that. Down below here, Here's more of her commentary where she said, there is no denying that demand remains weak compared to normal because affordability is poor. So we know that we have an affordability problem out there. However, the same factors that make affordability poor also make homeowners reluctant to sell their homes. Focusing exclusively on the demand side of the equation will make you sad. Look at the weakness of supply, which shows no signs of improvement. I would have thought that we'd start seeing some supply coming up, but that's not happening. Uh, with decreasing number of homes going on sale, those that do have an increasing chance, those that do have an increasing chance of a successful sale. We are recording fewer cancellations and fewer expirations. This is a positive readout, folks, and it's based on hard numbers, not opinions about how the market ought to be behaving. The volume may be low, but the market is operating with great efficiency. It's getting easier to sell a home. So um, rumors of my death have been uh, greatly exaggerated, I guess is what the housing market's telling us. And uh, we're seeing homes go on the market and they're, and they're selling. Now, they have to offer concessions. Um, I'm seeing a lot of buyers that are trying to come in far, far lower than what the market is willing to move on. When I say market, that's when people jump in and go, sellers are greedy. Sellers are always going to try and get top dollar for their house. That's been that way since houses were built. So, but sellers are trying desperately and they have been saying, well, they're asking 500. I'm going to give them 440. Uh, they're not, they're not taking it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, multiple offer situations going on there right now. Let me turn my phone off so you don't have to hear this, but let's get to the water situation here. Cause this is, this is interesting. I looked at a couple places. Uh, there's a site here called Watershed Connection, and they track the percentage of our reservoirs that are out there. And look at this. The lowest one total system a year ago down here, I just erased it, a year ago was 71. And right now, 
everything here. Total Salt Lake system is 88. Uh, here's Apache Lake is 96%. Um, Canyon Lake, 97%. And uh, um, so that's a, good, uh, that's a good read on our water. And there's another one here called Arizona's Resource Report. And it's showing higher Horseshoe Dam, 106%. Um, Lake Havasu, 0.26. Oh, no, here's the percentage right here. I'm reading this wrong. 103% there, Lake Avisu. That one kind of surprises me. Lake Mojave at Davis Dam, 100%. So the rains that we've had have filled up our local reservoirs, and uh, that's making a huge dent in our drought. And, uh, and it's going on to say here how a productive burst of winter or winter moisture may or may not impact the drought in the Southwest. And the article goes on to say that, that while our reservoirs are filling up, they're going to have to start letting some water go over the top. And, uh, but don't worry, it's not like California. We don't let it roll out to the ocean. It actually fills up our aquifers. So we're looking in really good shape. Now we have 36% more snow in the Colorado mountains than normal, not versus last year, but versus what they call normal snowfall. And it's, uh, it's still March and they get a lot of snow in March. So when that starts running off, um, you'll see it start to fill up Lake Powell and Lake Mead again, probably not huge amounts of, of water. We get about 30% of our, of our water from the Colorado River, but we have been um, asked to cut back um, an additional 10%. So, and that usually falls to the farmers. Now, a lot of this water that I just showed you that's uh, in our reservoirs here goes to farming as well, about 70% of it. But the rumors, not the rumors, but the fact that Arizona is drying up and we don't have enough water looks like uh, for now, nature is helping us out. And Buckeye's working overtime to secure groundwater for continued growth following the state report. You may remember that report that said, uh, you know, you can't build out there until you find a 100 year supply of water. Now, 100 years, that's a long time. I'm probably not going to be here. Um, as one person wrote in a comment, what do you care? You're not going to be around. <laughs> so Buckeye said it has welcomed the release of a new analysis of groundwater in the Hasiampa sub-basin, which showed there's not enough groundwater resources to support the projected growth of the area for 100 years. And Governor Katie Hobbs in January ordered the release of this report. I don't know why they were keeping it quiet. If water providers and developers are unable to secure alternative water sources, this could impact the growth of the area. But Buckeye Mayor Eric Osborne said that similarly to how the East Alley was built, Buckeye will be developed incrementally as more water is secured over time. We're working overtime to try and bring new water into the portfolio, he said. The report itself takes a static approach. If you do nothing and manage that basin, you end up with shortages of 100 years out, about 15%. So they're still years and years away where they're saying we may run out of water if nothing changes. And the city said the release of the report also prompted it to start preliminary discussions with Arizona State University Kyle, Kyle Center for the water policy. So you're basically reading here that, um, that yeah, I'm going to talk about Rio Verde in just a second here, Jackie, that that they're aggressively trying to, to find more water, but we're also reading that our aquifers are starting to get more water. These recent rains that we've had now are really going to help the well situation up in uh, Pine and Strawberry and Payson because uh, the uh, Payson got a lot of snow this year. So did Flagstaff, so did Sholo. That all comes down, helps everybody bit with their wells. Now Jackie's saying, did you hear that Rio Verde plan failed unless something changed the last couple of days? Um <clears throat> So, yeah, they they reached an agreement with Scottsdale and Maricopa County to ship them water again. And for some reason, it, it fell apart, as most negotiations tend to. I suspect uh, they're going to work out something, uh, but they're scrambling out there. And they're trying to buy time uh, for EPCOR to come in and build a system. Then EPCOR said that that's going to take about three years. So it may be, and it's not going to be cheap water, folks. When EPCOR gets done, that's going to be expensive. Um, Better afternoon, hand pink waving from Italia. Welcome. And I, I'll look up and see what time it is out there. Um, take a look at our pending listings. This is also showing you 
that uh, they're going up. Um, you know, they're and they do this time of year, but we've actually got more pending listings now than we did pre pandemic. And uh, we're not up to the levels that we were during the crazy period right here. And that's okay. I hope we don't get up to that level again. I'd like to see affordability continue this positive trend. So as we watch rates, it looks like there's some adjusting going on there. And we're not getting hit as hard with uh, at sales with the higher rates as I think most of us here on this channel, including me anticipated it. And a lot of that's because we went from three and a half to 7% real quick and the wheels fell off the wagon. So now we get back up to 7% again. Is it going to happen again? Um, it hasn't happened yet. So as we watch these numbers and we take a look and say, well, what do we think is going to change? Uh, we're not seeing it yet. Um, now anything can change. Uh, we could end up with rates considerably higher and uh, sales can dip back down to 2200 over seven day moving average when that happens um, and the supply and demand changes once again, then uh, we're going to see some weakness. Uh, I want to take a look at the Cromford index, see if they updated it from yesterday or not here. And um, no, it's still, still the same. You can see that demand is higher than supply. I was expecting this little number down here to go this way. And it's not. So supply is not going up. So if you're out there looking for a home right now, um, there's certainly a lot more supply than we had last year at, at this time, uh, but uh, not enough to wet everybody's whistle. So a little, little tough out there. So I think uh, the chair, chairman pal talks today. Let me see if there's been an update on the rates here for just a moment. We're still sitting at 6.99 on uh, the national number. So he speaks today when the market was kind of pushing against him um, and rates were down like 5.75 uh, Powell was saying, trying to tell the market, Hey guys, we're going to be in this situation for a while and rates are going to be higher. When the market finally believed him and they adjusted and rates went up, chairman Powell just kind of said, well, I told you. So now as he speaks today to Congress, what is he going to say? He's going to say, well, I told you, and I looks like I'm going to have to come in even hotter than I said I was. That's what they're expecting today. And that's why you're seeing rates up. And not like anything else, um, you know, buy on rumor, sell on fact. Once he makes a statement, the market probably won't react because um, they've already taken that into consideration. There's already tidbits coming out today on, on uh, what he's what he has to say. And uh, Jackie, yes, thanks for, thanks for the likes. Um, you know, I've noticed when I take my GoPro out and I go somewhere interesting, I get four times as many likes as I do sitting here on my comfortable little office. So I'm going to take the GoPro out again. I found something out yesterday I did not know, and I can't believe I didn't know this. Did you know that Lauren Green from Bonanza, he loved that house that was built for the set so much that he had one built exactly like it, and it's in East Mesa. So I'm going to try and go there and show that. Um, he had a house built. It looks exactly like the Bonanza house. And, uh, and he even bought the horse that he was riding on that show. And that horse lived to 45 years old. I thought that was, that was very interesting. They're continuing a path with rate increases, probably to 8% or more. Could happen. Um, I'm tired of guessing. <laughs> I'm just going to watch it. <laughs> we'll see what goes on here. Um, it's uh, It was easier during the Paul Volcker days. You just kind of stuck your head in your hands and said, holy cow, how, when is this going to, I remember my dad was a realtor at the time. He just got into it and he would just say, if they would just lower rates. And uh, he started out in an old office. He just had a card table with uh, three other partners in there. And, and uh, all of his business was done on assumable mortgages and uh, wraps. So it was, it was a tough time. I'm glad we're not seeing that at this point now. I don't see us getting up to a 17% rate like we did. Um, but uh, affordability is eventually, I think we're going to see affordability take a long time to work its way out. When you think about it, we could be in this zone that we're in for another year and a half. And prices could gradually start to come down or stay flat as wages increase. There are so many different scenarios thanks christy um that it's you could drive yourself nuts trying to figure it all out um so in fact 
drive himself nuts. I took our show yesterday that I did. And what I do is I upload them again in the afternoon as an upload versus a live stream because it, it reaches a different audience. And it was up. And I got in this morning and it's it's gone. I don't know where it went. <laughs> so I got to figure out what I, I, I mean. I've still got the, the live stream on there from yesterday morning, but the, the upload that I did, and it'll say replay on it or repeat or something. But I looked on this morning and uh, it's not there. So uh, some gremlins got in while I was sleeping and removed my video. So everybody have a great Tuesday and take on the rest of the week. And thanks for watching. Please smash that like button. I appreciate it. Thanks.